Okay, thanks for the opportunity to present. My name is Jerome Mellon, uh, representing uh, Monash Medical Centre in Melbourne, Australia. I'll be presenting on Altus and Solix single incision slings uh, for stress incontinence. These are my disclosures. So single incision slings are the newest generation of mid-urethral mid slings used to treat female stress urinary incontinence. Now they were delisted by the Therapeutic Goods Administration, which is the governing body in Australia, in 2018 due to a lack of device-specific data. Most of the data on single incision slings was based on the um, um, MINIARC, um, and the Therapeutic Goods Administration asked uh, for device-specific data. So in this context, we wanted to evaluate uh, the efficacy and safety of two um, single incision slings that we'd been using at our unit, the Altus and Solix. So we did a retrospective study um, looking at a population of women with stress urinary incontinence who received one of these two single incision slings following um, failed conservative measures and appropriate counselling. Um, we excluded women with uh, intrinsic sphincter deficiency uh, those women who had had a previous uh, sling or untreated detrusor overactivity. Now, the primary outcome of our um, study was subjective cure, which was a negative response to the ICIQ, a urinary incontinence short form questionnaire um, of leakage during uh, coughing, sneezing or physical activity. And secondary outcomes included objective cure, which was a negative cough stress test with a comfortably full bladder, and functional outcomes using, using the PGII, the ICQUISF, and the Australian Pelvic Floor Questionnaire Bladder Section. We also looked at safety um, for mesh-related complications, such as exposure, reoperation, and pain. And uh, we collected data on women uh, greater than 12 months following their surgery, including examination, patient-reported outcome questionnaires, and the adverse events. So, over a five-year period, 111 women uh, had one of these surgeries uh, in our unit. Um, Ten women were excluded due to um, being unable to be contacted or declining to be involved, and leaving 101 women uh, included for analysis. The mean follow-up time was 32 months, but ranged up to five years. So this is a, a busy slide, but basically to demonstrate that over Altus and Solix groups, there was no significant differences in all the parameters, apart from uh, their POPQ scores, um, which you can see down there, um, where uh, but the difference was by one centimetre, and I would doubt that this would be clinically relevant. So the results between the two groups, the cure rates um, were quite good, the subjective cure rates based on the ICIQ UISF score were 71% uh, for Altus and 72% for Solix, with no difference between um, the two groups. And the objective cure was a bit higher, 94% for Altus and 87% for Solix, based on a negative cough stress test. All functional outcomes between both groups showed no significant difference. So looking at the... Um, Patient Graded uh, Improvement Index, the ICIQ UF, UISF, uh, the need for overactive bladder medications post-operatively to deal with urgency, um, and the uh, Australian Pelvic Floor Questionnaire Bladder Section. The mean change in the uh, Australian Pelvic Floor Questionnaire Bladder Section, the improvement um, pre and post-surgery um, was significant in both groups. The minimal important difference was 1.3, and you can see that both groups um, had double um, that score, and there was no difference between the two groups. Looking at safety and complications, so um, it appears that both uh, slings, um, we would say, has a good safety profile. One sling in the Altus group uh, was removed at one week due to pain, and a retropubic um, sling was placed. Um, the, there was a significant difference in elevation in the Altus group for short-term pain 
So you can see uh, groin pain less than one week or less than three months was significantly higher in the Altus group. Um, however, um, there was no difference in longer term um, pain. There was three patients which had groin pain up to 12 months and these were all in the Altus group uh, and they resolved spontaneously um, with simple analgesia and some physio physiotherapy at three, six and 12 months. There was no pain um, after 12 months in any of the cases. So, um, so in conclusion, we would um, suggest that Altus and Solex single incision, uh, single incision slings appear to be comparable to each other for, for treating female stress incontinence over the medium term follow-up with a low rate of complications. However, we would recognise that it, there is the potential um, for, um, for not all complications um, to have been picked up, given the nature of the study. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, uh, first question, uh, the, the procedure can be performed by the same group of others or different uh, surgeons, they do the procedure? Uh, this, you mean on the author list of yeah. the, yep. So the procedure was performed by about um, a combination of three urogynecologists or uh, urogynecology expert, fellows. Expert surgeon. Yes. Uh, because uh, I was uh, um, wondering why there is a huge discrepancy on the groin pain uh, compare, compare that the two procedures, the two kit, the two devices are quite similar, no? Correct. Uh, um, so could, the, could you explain to us why so much uh, great difference? Because also uh, after three months, uh, still five percent in, in only in the Altis group. The um, the devices are slightly different in that the Altis device is adjustable, so it's placed uh, into both obturator membranes, and then it has a uh, a draw where you can then adjust the tensioning, whereas the solix is simply perforated into the membrane and, and it's tensioned like that. Um, I can't explain why there is a difference in the groin pain up to three months with both devices, because you're right, they are slightly similar, but we know with every single device that they each have their unique properties. And that's the problem with pooling all single incision slings and trying to get one result out. And that's why the TGA has, in Australia, has um, come out and asked for device specific results, safety and efficacy, because every device is very different. Mm. Okay, uh, any other question? Real quick, I noticed on your demographics uh, slide that many of these patients had pop QBA points of minus 0.1 Many appeared to have stage two cystocele or pelvic organ prolapse in the anterior compartment. Were there concomitant procedures at the time of your mini slings? How many patients got a supportive procedure? How many did not? That kind of thing. Correct. Um, so this is part of a, a larger study, and those things have been looked at. Um, it's just due to time, I wasn't able to present everything. Um, but it was about 70% of patients, roughly, that did get concomitant um, Prolapse surgery. Um, all the all those pa that was not an exclusion criteria. Thank you. Thank you.